when I watched the movies. Um, and I remember my mom had a British edition of, of Harry Potter. And, uh, you know, I, I look back on the Harry Potter books. I did read them all. Um, you know, and I watched the movies. There is a huge new left influence on that. And but J.K. Rowling's politics are pretty awful. I mean, she's pro-Israel, very pro-Israel. She is against Jeremy Corbyn and called Jeremy Corbyn an anti-Semite. Uh, she's anti-Russia. I mean, her politics are pretty awful. OK, but regardless, just being who she is, the fact that she is from Britain at the time that she's from, she's heavily influenced by Marxism. And that is a fact. Um, for example, um, first uh, first example of that I would give is that she has many times said that her hero is Jessica Mitford. Do You know who Jessica Mitford is? Jessica Mitford was a teenage girl from a very, very wealthy British family who stole um, stole money from her parents and ran away to fight the fascists in Spain. Um, and, uh, it's a, you know, very, you know, kind of a famous feminist icon, moved to the United States and was in the Communist Party USA, uh, left the Communist Party USA after the Khrushchev revelations and just became this kind of famous American journalist. She wrote The American Way of Death, which is about how funeral homes rip people off. It was a best-selling book. It was about how funeral homes rip people off, uh, you know, that she wrote. And, uh, you know, um, that Jessica Mitford, this kind of teenage rebellion communist feminist, is is the hero of J.K. Rowling. She's written introductions to biographies of Jessica Mitford, etc., so there's that. Um, the other thing is that uh, Harry Potter is very much a new left fantasy, right? There's, you know, the bad guys are all a bunch of traditionalist conservatives who don't believe in race mixing, no mixing with the mudbloods. Uh, you know, they're, the conservatives are a bunch of fascists, basically. Uh, the good people are a bunch of hippies who wear robes and have this secret underground society that exists on the margins and no one else knows it's there. And they're doing magic, man. And, they, you know, it's very much the hippies, the hippies versus the fascists. That's, you know, versus traditionalist fascists. That's very much the, the book. The hippies, are the good guys, the traditionalist fascists are the bad guys. Uh, the way she describes Harry Potter's uh, family members, the, the non-magical family members, uh, they're the... Um, you know, they're the they're they're the Dursleys or whatever. And they are very much supposed to be a caricature of the labor aristocracy of well-paid British working class people. Right. They're overweight. They're fat. Um, they're right wing. They believe in the death penalty. They believe in corporal punishment. They and they're very afraid of what everyone else thinks of them. They're very conforming. Um, you know, they're a caricature of your typical uh upper working class, higher paid industrial working class in Britain. They're, you know, or middle class or working class. They're, they're a bunch of squares, basically. They're a bunch of squares. They're a bunch of suburban middle class squares. And, you know, Harry Potter lives with these suburban middle class squares and he doesn't fit in with them. But luckily he discovers that subculture, that group of people with long hair and beards who want to do their own thing, man. And they're just like fighting the system, brother. And it's so new left 1960s. It's a joke. At one point, uh, the students form their own army, Dumbledore's army. And it's like it reminds you of students for a democratic society and how they ended up becoming the weather underground. Um, there's another theme at one point, there's a group of people in the Harry Potter books that are called house elves. They are called house elves and the house elves are brutally oppressed. The wizards use the house elves and treat them badly. And so Hermione, one of the Harry Potter characters wants to rescue the house elves. And so she forms a liberation group for the house elves, but the house elves don't want to be free. They're happy with their oppression. And it's so frustrating. And that's just like the new, the 60s new left going into working class newspapers or going into working class communities, trying to sell them communist newspapers and average working class people, you know, saying, screw you. I'm not interested in communism. I love the American way of life. This is all this is all very much the the new left. It is it is a complete fairy tale of the new left. There are 1960s and 70s and 80s communist themes all over it, right? The students are fighting the man. The conservatives are a bunch of squares. Aver or the conservative, the, the bad guys are a bunch of conservatives in dark robes who don't believe in race mixing. And the, you know, the average people are a bunch of squares and are boring. And they're the Dursleys and they're muggles. And, you know, the heroes have this secret counterculture. And it's, it is, it is a whole 1960s wank. Read the, the History of Students for a Democratic Society by Kirkpatrick Sale. It is, it is, the new left is all over it. Um, 
So yeah, that's my analysis of, of Harry Potter. And again, I'm not commenting on the trans stuff. I'm just telling you it is a 1960s new left fantasy. And the new left is not what we need. We need populism. We need working class power, right? Every, anyone here old enough to remember hippies were trying to meditate and levitate the Pentagon. We'll talk about that, right? Levitate the Pentagon. Um, but, you know, we don't need anti-populist new left stuff. We need working class power. We need the politics of Gus Hall and William Z. Foster and Eugene Debs, Black Panthers, Huey Newton, Fred Hampton, bringing people together, the working class fighting for itself, class for itself, class against class, the workers against the bosses. So the politics that you would get, you know, the, the politics that, that J.K. Rowling is very much reflecting in her novels is, is not the politics we need, but it's the politics of the Marxists and leftists of the era that she grew up in. I think she admits she marched against the Vietnam War uh, when she was a teenager. Um, she, you know, I mean, she was very much a child of the new left, of the hippie counterculture new left. All right. Um, was Stalinism a thermidor or an extension?